so this will be the syllabus for the module 5 you can observe over here applied mechanical measurement in that measurement of force torque pressure then again dynamometers we will going to discuss about absorption dynamometer pony brake dynamometer rope brake dynamometer and power measuring instruments then McLeod gauge Bridgman gauge Pirani gauge so those are the different measuring instruments we are going to discuss right particularly in this first half portion of this fifth module applied mechanical measurement you can observe over here on the screen these are some of the measuring devices if you take the measurement that is the force or the load these are some of the instruments you can observe over in the right side of the screen so these are some of the measuring instrument which is used to measure these physical quantities force load if you take analytical balance platform balance proving ring pony brake dynamometer right when when it comes to the torque pony brake dynamometer hydraulic dynamometer will be for this again for the pressure bridgman gauge mcleod gauge pirani gauge all these measuring instrument we will be discussing in this particular half module of the module 5 right here right pony brake dynamometer you can able to see dynamometers mcleod gauge pirani gauge right again this dynamometer all these things you can observe here with respect to force load with respect to torque with respect to pressure these are the some of measuring instrument we will be discussing particularly in this model about how to uh, use it what is the use of these type of measuring instruments right you come to the introduction of this particular model We'll start with the force. Right? The force means all of you know that one. It is mass into acceleration, right? So it is a reaction between the two bodies. That reaction between the two bodies, it can be either pull, there is a tensile force, or it can be the push, compressive force. Right? So that is what the definition of the force. The force is a, a vector quantity. So all of you know that one, right? So force is represented mathematically as a vector quantity. So vector quantity means it is having both magnitude as well as the direction. The force is a vector quantity which is having the both mass as well as a direction. See the measurement of this force be done by any of the two method. The measurement of the force that is the reaction between the two bodies. Either it can be pull or it can be push. It can be tensile force or it can be compressive force. And this force can be measured by any of the two method. As you can observe here, direct method, indirect method. So direct method of measuring the force, indirect method of measuring the force. That is the reaction between the two bodies. It can be either pull or it can be either push. See here, it is a vector quantity. It is having both magnitude, that is the amount or size, as well as the direction. In which direction it is acting. That is what the force. You can observe here the first method it is a direct method of measuring the force 
three eight in one a direct comparison with a gravitational force on a standard mass as the name represent a direct method means it is a direct comparison of the standard mass the unknown force with that of the known standards that is known standard mass gravitational force there is the direct method of measuring the force the example is physical balance so this will be the physical balance so all of you are aware of it one side you are going to keep the unknown unknown quantity other side you're going to play keep up with the, the standard mass it can be in terms of kg or it comes in it can be in terms of grams depending on the type of uh, analytical balance right the force as i said it is a mass into acceleration right that is mass in the gravitational field experience experiences a force it is force is mass into acceleration which is nothing but the weight of a body which you are actually measuring using this analytical balance any unknown force any unknown force in the sense unknown uh, magnitude it can be compared with the standard mass that is a gravitational force on a standard mass in order to know that one this standard mass the value of that it should be known accurately in order to know the magnitude of the, the unknown one you should know the standard mass exactly then only you can able to uh, do the measurement there is a direct comparison right so this is a one of the method of measuring the force physical balance the second method will be indirect method in this indirect method it involves the measurement of effect of the force on the body what will be the effect of the force which is acting on the body that will be determined that will be measured in this indirect method so for example the acceleration of a body of a known mass subjected to force that is an indirect method of doing see here an example measurement of acceleration of a body of known mass which is subjected to a force this is one of the example of the indirect way of measuring the force measurement of acceleration of the body of known mass which subjected to a force so the meaning of this first example will be this you can observe here on the screen right see here so this will be the the known mass 200 g and this will be the force which is been applied say for example 50 pound 50 pound will be the force which is been applied for this known mass similarly the same force for the this particular mass which is be 20000 kg so the acceleration here for this it will be will fast and acceleration for this it will be slow so this is what the meaning of indirect method of measuring the forces the measurement of acceleration of a body how fast the object or this particular body will be moving accelerating of a known mass you can observe here of a known mass this is 200 g this is 2000 20000 kg right known mass which subjected to force so 50 pound of force being applied to this so how fast it will going to be accelerate that measurement is about indirect method so this is the one of the example of the indirect method of doing the 
measurement of force which is acting on a body by measuring the acceleration of a known mass the second example will be this you can observe here measurement of resultant effect that is a deformation when the force is applied on a elastic member right when a force is applied on a elastic member assume this will be the hanging bridge on the hanging bridge when the vehicle moves there will be some sort of a deformation that amount of deformation the resultant effect of the force which is acting that can be measured but it is considered as an indirect method of doing the measurement of the forces this is the another example measurement of resultant force the effect the deformation when a force is being applied on a elastic member this is the other example of indirect method of doing the measurement right <coughs> see here these are some of the different balances different way measuring instruments on most of them you have come come across you know these things right compression of balance this is postal balance table balance this also considered as equal arm balance this is spring balance platform balance and this is steel yard balance roman steel yard balance or it is also called unequal arm balance this particular instrument and this is electronic balance this electronic balance you already used in the lab right see all all these different measuring instrument to measure the mass of the object right a force of the object and in this particularly we will be discussing these three table balance platform balance steel yard steel yard balance there is equal arm balance unequal arm balance and the platform balance <clears throat> see before going into that those uh, devices see here a lever principle right see when discussing about the scales these measuring scales balances which is having the levers right <clears throat> these levers it is actually a bar which is capable of turning to a on a fixed point that fixed point based on which it will make the movement it will be considered as the fulcrum what you can observe over here on the screen right this is fulcrum which is used to balance the applied load that is weight and applied power which is force for a purpose of measuring in amount see one side will be the load point other side it will be the power point <clears throat> and the distance from the fulcrum it will be considered as this side it is power arm this side it is the load arm for this force to be measured the known gravitational force on the mass this is the knowing of this is very much essential to measure the force the unknown force on the one end of the balance the other side they will place the weight that is the load which is known standard mass then they will it will be balanced to know the force which is being applied so these are the five components which will be there in the the levers which is used in the weighing machines particularly which will going to weigh the mass or the force right one is this load point fulcrum power point power arm load arm these are the distances so now come to the analytical balance 
the analytical balance that means <coughs> analytical balance this right the weighing is required part of almost any analysis both for measuring the sample and for preparing the standard solutions in chemical laboratory or in the r and d these type of analytical balance is very much essential right uh, because without measuring the quantities the analysis won't be performed in order to say how much of quantity addition we are going to enhance the properties of the material or not to say that the particular sample will be having the more on the quantity uh, the quality compared to other one it required to have these type of analytical balances right <clears throat> usually in the laboratories in the r and d they are going to have this type of measuring instrument analytical balance so here in clinical laboratory sciences we deal with rather small weights in the order of gram to a few milligram or less standard laboratory weighing is typically made to three or four different four significant figures so that the weighing device must be more accurate and more sensitive <clears throat> the most versatile one will be the analytical balance the two methods of measuring the force what we discussed in that the first method we are going to take a direct method for the measurement of the force a direct method in this we will be discussing three devices which will be used to measure the force the unknown force through a direct <coughs> method right? in this direct method first method of measuring the force the first uh, device which we want to discuss about is the analytical balance or it is also called equal arm balance as you can observe over here this is the equal arm balance equal arm means from the center of gravity where the pointer is moving to this point and to this point it is having the equal distance that's why it is called equal arm balance see this is a direct comparison of the unknown force with that of the gravitational force of the standard mass by making the pointer to align to the zero by e equating the unknown force and the gravitational force gravitational force means the mass the standard mass what you're going to apply this is the unknown force this is the gravitational force which is having the standard mass by equating both with the help of a pointer to the zero we can able to do the measurement this is equal arm balance or analytical balance <coughs> and this is what the diagram will look like right so this will be the pointer on the scale can observe l1 and l2 having the equal distance that's what is called equal arm balance from the center of gravity from the <coughs> fulcrum to the point where the unknown force is there and the standard mass is there these are equal distance equal arm balance so unknown force of weight say for example m2 into the gravitational force again here this m1 weight so by applying the standard mass you are calculating or no uh, you are measuring the unknown force on the other side of the pan by using this analytical balance and in this particular analytical balance this will be the the balance arm right what you can see over here the pointer with the fulcrum right which will be moving on the scale this here it is considered to get the equation for sensitivity this is a small uh, derivation to get the sensitivity of this analytical balance 
<coughs> or equal or balance see here in this image what you are seeing it is the schematic of the analytical balance and here they are shown prominently about the the arm the balance arm the left side is having the w1 the right side is having w2 the g represent center of gravity so with respect to this the weight 1 and weight 2 need to be balanced and l l what you can observe here these are having the distances equal distance so equal arm from the center of gravity right? <coughs> okay, this is a direct comparison of the unknown forces with the gravitational force see here in this particular image w2 what you are observing on the screen this is the known one known force w1 will be the unknown force so it is a direct comparison of the unknown force with that of the gravitational force with the help of this analytical balance is being shown in the direction of the force what you can able to see here the arrow mark here the direction of the force here <coughs> is parallel to that of the gravitational force the force is a vector quantity which consists of magnitude as well as the direction but here the direction of both it will be parallel right and the same direction for that reason only magnitude is need to be determined in this analytical balance the force is a vector quantity which is having magnitude and direction the direction of b2 known and unknown forces are acting in the same direction so direction is not required only the magnitude need to be determined in this right magnitude means the amount which will what the analytical balance will going to do the magnitude right <coughs> see the arm here what is the what you can able to see here the balance arm this rotates about the point o you can observe here o with respect to this point this balance arm will going to move and there is there are two forces w1 and w2 are applied at the ends of the arm here at the ends of the arm it is being applied so w1 it is unknown force as i said right whereas w2 is the known force <coughs> due to the standard mass so w2 is the known force so here the standard mass will be applied and here the physical parameter physical quantity the unknown force uh, whichever it need to be measured it will be kept on the w1 <coughs> the point g is the center of gravity it is point g center of gravity of the arm balance right wb what you can observe here is the weight of the balance arm and the pointer this t suffix g will be the distance between the fulcrum and the center of gravity fulcrum is the point where the arm will going to move right from that point to the center of gravity the distance will be d suffix g so w1 and w2 are the two weights acting on the either end of the balance this theta what you can able to see over here this theta will be equal to zero when w1 and w2 are equal when weight on the one end of the arm and the weight on the other end of the arm when both are equal so this is a standard mass what you going to apply this is the unknown force when both are equal this theta subtended angle will be equal to zero <clears throat> right so therefore the weight of the balance arm and the pointer do not going to influence the measurement the weight of this balance arm and the pointer will not going to influence the measurement what it going to take place 
in this physical balance so sensitivity here that is given by the equation like this and it is defined as the angular deflection angular deflection theta per unit unbalance between the two weights w1 and w2 that is called sensitivity sensitivity of this particular analytical balance is defined as an angular deflection per unit unbalance between the two weights w1 and w2 it is given by the equation theta by w1 minus w2 right so this is what the sensitivity so we can write this w1 minus w2 as delta w also difference in the weight so that is what sensitivity theta by delta w the same image are going to take again in the next slide you can observe here right <coughs> see here the delta w what you can observe here delta w is the difference between the weights w1 and w2 the sensitivity can be calculated by writing the moment equation for this balance arm by writing the moment equation <coughs> you can able to you can able to generate this equation w1 into l cos theta minus db sin theta is equal to w2 into l cos theta plus db sin theta plus wb dg sin theta See here the distances db dg these distances what you can able to see as well as this distance l right see for small deflections the sine theta will be equal to theta because sine zero is zero right sine the value of sine zero is zero so for small deflections that means whenever the theta value will be nearly equal to zero the sine theta will be equal to theta that is sine zero is zero and for small deflections when theta value is nearly equal to zero cos theta is equal to one because cos zero is one that if it is substituted into this equation to this moment equation so w1 l minus db theta because sine theta is equal to theta theta that is sine zero is equal to zero similarly sine theta is equal to theta that is what it is substituted here in this equation which will be equal to w2 l plus db theta because sine theta is equal to theta here plus wb dg theta right after substituting these equations simplifying it you are going to get the equation for the theta so theta is equal to w1 minus w2 into l divided by w1 plus w2 into db d sub x b plus the weight of the balance arm into the distance d sub x g but it is known that the sensitivity equation it is theta by delta w right so uh, this equation sensitivity is defined as the angular deflection per unit unbalanced between the two weights w1 and w2 so here that equation is taken for this the theta it is been substituted this value over here so finally the sensitivity <coughs> value will be going to equal to l divided by two times the w that is the weight into d sub x b plus w b t g so the sensitivity of the balance will be independent of the weight so independent of the weight which is being added over onto this umbilical balance <coughs> the sensitivity of this instrument is independent so for that reason this d suffix b will be equal to zero which if we substitute into this equation final sensitivity equation will become l by wb dg 
so the sensitivity of this physical balance or equal rm balance instrument will be depend on number of parameters right the sensitivity can be improved by decreasing both dg and db and by increasing the wb right and increasing the uh, uh, the length of this as the arm length is increases the sensitivity is going to increase but however the uh, that what uh, up to what length it can able to increase that there is a compromise to be done to stuck between the sensitivity and stability of the balance the length more over the length the sensitivity of the instrument will be more but there should be a compromise should be done there should be some value beyond which if the length increase to more that the l value if it is to more then the stability of this balance will going to be decreased so there should be a compromise should be done between the sensitivity and the stability of the article balance so this is one of the method of directly measuring the unknown force with of the gravitational force that is the on the known mass right analytical balance or it is also called equal rm balance the second one will be the unequal rm balance you can observe the image previous one equal rm balance it is having the two pan whereas it is here it is about to have only one pan you can observe the image right so it is having only one pan whereas the previous one equal rm balance or analytical balance it is having the two pan by using only one pan it is possible to do the measurement unequal arm balance by adding the some dead weight to it it is possible to do the measurement also right see whatever the disadvantage which will be there in the equal arm balance that can be overcome using this unequal arm balance method this also comes under direct method of uh, measuring the force but whatever the disadvantage it will be there in the equal arm balance that can be overcome uh, the disadvantage in the equal arm balance or analytical balance will be it require a set of weight always it is used to carry the amount of weight a set of weights different weights need to be carried which are as heavy as the maximum weight which need to be measured right there is what the disadvantage of the equal arm balance you can observe here in equal arm balance you need to have a set of weight that set of weight need to place which is equal to the the <clears throat> unknown force which are used which you are going to do the measurement right this will not be there in the unequal arm balance even though the object which you are measuring even though the unknown force which is going to be measuring even if it is heavier weight but still it can be measured with the help of the light weights it is not that it is required the equal amount of weight to be used even though the object or the force which you are going to measure in this unequal arm balance even though it is heavier object or heavier weight you need not to have the same or equivalent weight to do the measurement by using the a light weights still it is possible to do the measurements so there is what the one of the advantage over to the equal arm balance or analytical balance you can observe the image here here the distance is unequal suppose if this point will be the fulcrum till this point to till this in this point 
see the distance it is not equal that's why it is an unequal arm even though it is unequal arm even though object which you are going to measure is heavier by using only the light weights it is possible to do the measurement <clears throat> so we're going to discuss about how that small weight can be used you want to measure the heavier object also by using this unequal arm balance so all of you may have heard of this archimedes law right? if this is the equal arm balance this is unequal arm balance an example right in order to the first method in the direct method the equal arm balance you need to have the same if this is the unknown force this will be the gravitational force of on a known mass you need to have the equal amount to get it balanced to know the <coughs> value of the unknown force which is acting right this is the equal arm balance whereas archimedes is the person who suggested this law archimedes law right even though observe here from the flocal fulcrum on this side on this side right and right, left side both will going to have the equal distance equal arm whereas here this is the fulcrum this side it is more this side it is less unequal arm by using the less weight you can able to measure the heavier object also unequal arm balance here the historic pharmacy scale has equal levers the arms on both side but this may not be necessary to have this equal arm on the both side of the fulcrum or it may not be necessary to have the equal amount of weight the standard mass to measure the unknown force according to the archimedes <clears throat> see here german people learn it in a simplest form of craft into craft arm is equal to last into last arm it is in english force times the force arm length equal to weight times the weight arm length you can observe the example here the distance here say for example one whereas here it is four meter suppose here this is the weight which you want to apply by using this still you can able to do the measurement of this see 8 into 1 is equal to 4 into 2 right so you'll be get balance so here this side will be 8 this side also will be 8 so it will be balanced you can able to measure the unknown force even though it is unequal arm unequal length and even though you are not using the same amount of weight as per the the unknown mass is concerned so this is what the archimedes law this is being used in the archimedes law is used in the unequal arm balance to measure the unknown forces by using the lesser weights the archimedes and the law of a lever so this is what the an example of that archimedes law here a 140 pound of 140 pound weighing boy which is 2 feet away from the fulcrum is the center of gravity of this particular lever he can able to balance another person which is going to weigh only 70 pound but at a distance of about 4 feet it will be get balanced so 140 into 2 280 70 into 4 280 it will get balanced so this is what the uh, law which is been used in the unequal arm balance and this is what the unequal balance arm may look like right 
you can observe this image bulk term is somewhere here this is the left side this is the right side that is the load arm power arm this will be the mass this will be the unknown force and this will be the pointer The unequal arm balance is used to measure the heavier weight with the help of light or lighter weights. It is not that like the equal arm balance, you need to have the same amount of weight or set of weights to measure the unknown force. Even by having the lighter weight, it is possible to measure the heavier weights in unequal arm balance. So it uses the two arm balance. Because it is unequal arm, one side of the arm from the fulcrum, it is called as the load arm. What you can observe here in the screen. The other side of the arm from the fulcrum, it is considered as power arm. The load arm, you can observe here, load arm is the way load is applied. And power arm is the point in which counterweight of the balance will be counterweight will be applied so that the this particular arm will be in the equilibrium so both side will get <coughs> will be equal to same right so this will be the knife edge so this will be the mass this right side what you can able to see it will be the power arm this will be the load arm Can observe this image right? unequal arm balance the unknown mass that is unknown force this is the standard mass you can observe which is movable by using only this and by adjusting the length you can able to measure the unknown force the heavier weight by using the less weight by just increasing the length from the fulcrum so this is what the unequal arm balance is about. See the, this is what the image, what it is there. This is the fulcrum, the knife edge. So this will be the mass, which can be movable. You might have observed that, right? This will be the scale. This will be the mass, which can be moved. In order to get the balancing of this liver particular liver more the weight or heavier the weight on this side more the distance it will become balanced so you can able to measure that okay. <clears throat> so this will be the load arm this will be the power arm <clears throat> so whatever the major disadvantages the analytical balance or equal arm balance will be which require a set of weight that is as heavy as the maximum weight which is to be measured that can be overcome using this unequal arm balance <coughs> See here the figure here what you can observe it shows the unequal arm balance here mass m right mass m it acts as the power on the beam mass m here it acts as the power on the beam and exerts a force which is given by f suffix g due to the gravity right there is a gravitational force on a known mass right? so f suffix g we can write as m into so this force <coughs> acts as the counterposing force against the load, which may be considered as the test force. So this is the counterweight for this weight, the test force, which is actually going to be measured, which is given as F suffix T. <coughs> See the beam is 
pivoted on the knife edge. The test force F suffix C is applied by a screw or a lever through the knife edge until the pointer indicate that the beam is horizontal. That is, it will reach the equilibrium. For balancing of the moment, F suffix T so the test force into A equal to F suffix G into P because this is an unequal arm balance which function based on the Archimedes law. As Archimedes law states here, this D1 into W1 is equal to D2 into W2. That is what here it is being considered. F suffix T into A, this distance is equal to F suffix G into this distance B. Here, this image I have taken over here again. The test force F suffix T is equal to F suffix G into B by A. This equation F suffix T is written in terms of F suffix G into B by A. This F suffix G is nothing but the mass. You can observe here this image. Right? F suffix G is nothing but the mass. So mass into gravity. Is constant into B by A. Again, here you can observe the test force is proportional to the distance B of the mass from the knife edge. If mass M is constant and the test force is applied at a fixed distance A from the knife edge, that is, load arm is constant, right? If the scale is used in different gravitational fields, a correction may be made for the change in the value of G. In this particular unequal arm balance, it can also be used to for the measurement of unknown mass as well as the, the, the tensile force. So F suffix T, the test force will be equal to M1 into G, where M1 is the unknown mass. So for the balance to take place, M1 into J in, G into A is equal to M into G into B. Once you to substitute it, so M1 is equal to M into A by B is equal to A constant into so the power arm B may be calibrated to read the unknown mass. This is M1. Right? So directly if M and A are fixed, this forms a basis of countless weighing. 